Hello, it's me, it's Javi Garrido. What tools can we use to change our energy, to change our limiting beliefs, to improve in sports and life? Welcome to the first episode of Conscious Athlete. I will start telling you why I'm doing this podcast. I was dealing with many situations in my life. My childhood was quite intense. Nothing out of the ordinary. I know that we all have so our issues in our life. Parents split when I was very young. My mother was never at home because she was always working. And my father has some issues with addictions. So as a result, I became a very shy, extremely shy, lonely and observant girl. All the experience we go through when we are born till the age of seven shape our subconscious mind. And for me, I was blessed with insecurities, panic attacks as I grew up and also depression. When I was 18, one day I saw some guys on the street grinding a ledge on a skates and I thought, oh my God, this is so cool. I would like to learn to do this. So I started looking for information on internet and that is how I found out about aggressive line skating or roller freestyle. And at the beginning, it was difficult to me to find the skates. So I found, finally found them on an online shop in Santiago. And I remember the first time I put on my skates and I did drop in from a bowl. I felt so, so, so hard that I thought, oh my God, I will never do this again. But then I stood up and I realized that it wasn't that bad. This was the worst thing that could happen, just fall hard, falling hard. So I decided to continue and then I managed to buy protections, helmet, wristband, uh, knee pads and also shin guards. I got obsessed with learning tricks and every time I felt I wanted to improve. I felt like I was moving very slowly but at the same time I was having fun. Also all the problems I was feeling were not important to me anymore. My energy wasn't skating. I was always in the skate park and I was going to the university, bringing always my skate with me and after classes I went directly to skate every day and one day the guy who sold me my first skate came to talk to me because he wanted to sponsor me. At that time there were no more girls in the sport, just very a few, so I started competing and I remember the first big contest I went was in Ecuador. When I arrived there, I saw that there were no more girls and if I wanted to compete, I had to do it with guys. So I got very scared and the first thought that I had was, no, maybe I should just watch how they do it and learn from them. But then I thought, I'm coming from very far away from Chile. I made it to Ecuador, so I'm going to skate with the guys. It's okay. So I participate in the beginners category and I got the third place. And at that moment, I realized that I wasn't that bad as I thought that I was. In that moment, I knew that this could change my life. I was having fun in Ecuador, enjoying the beach, meeting all the other rollerbladers, being motivated by the people that were watching the contest. I knew that if I focus more on this, I could do something with this. So I start training, trying to improve. I was being harsh on myself though, I was trying, I was feeling the pressure of having a, a sponsor, so I was feeling that I had to show to others that I was worthy. I started competing in Chile, in Latin America, and many times I felt very frustrated. I remember one time my grandmother told me, with all her love, that I was too old to be wasting my time on a skate, that I should focus on my job, my career, in my future. So I remember at that moment I thought, what would my life be if I stopped skating? And I recognized that that wasn't a choice for me, that wasn't an option. I found out that skating was adding excitement to my life and I was not willing to stop that, even though it wasn't valued by the social adult life. When I was 22, I moved to Barcelona. It was always my dream to live in another country, coming to Europe. So I came to Spain to study a master's degree in digital marketing. And when I arrived here, I saw the competitive world of Europe and the level was much higher. The infrastructure of the skate park, the ramps were bigger and the riders were more skillful. So I remember the first contest that I 
I participate here was Barcelona Extreme and my results were so bad for me that I thought about quitting the sport and I remember at that time I saw a pro skater girl who I really admire quitting the sport because the injuries and the pressure was too much for performing for the sponsor and also the bar she had set for herself. But I didn't quit. I felt that something inside of me was telling me that this was a huge opportunity. I was the first girl coming from Chile and competing in European contests, so this motivated me to continue. The feeling of not being enough was there for 10 years. And if I'm honest, this was there always for the 10 years I was competing. Then during COVID, I realized that I wasn't being me. I had been in a relationship for many years and that also didn't match with who I wanted to be anymore. I was trying to fulfill the expectation of others instead of doing what I really wanted to do. Even though I had no clarity of what that had to be, I just knew that it wasn't it. I started looking for information, trying different things to show me a new path. I tried Akashic Records, Psychology, Hypnosis, Reiki, Human Design, Access Bars and Astrology. What I realized is that one of my strengths is to face my fear. So every time I feel fear, I go to face it, try to understand it, make it less significant. It's like seeing a big wave going close and learning how to surf it. From there, I started working on my limitation. I focused myself on finding out what would it take to change them. My insecurities, trauma, and other things that were stopping me from growing beyond who I was today. I started showing the part of myself that I thought it wasn't good about me, but it turned out that this was a reason for people to look at me. It was so weird to realize that at first, that it wasn't the image of prestige or performance that I thought I had to share, but the actual story of how learning through the most of brave choices I had made in my life. And here, two things happened. The first one is that I started skating the same I used to skate at the beginning, just for the fun. I was not trying to be better for others, just trying to be better than I was yesterday. I was trying to learn tricks just to see what else is possible. And from that moment, I never had an injury and my level of skating started to increase so fast, I was skating better than ever. Last week, I got third place in the world's biggest event skate in Eindhoven, Holland, Winter Clutch. I never ever would have imagined this was possible for me. I always dream about being in that podium with the best one of the world. And now that I'm 34, this dream came true. And while I was receiving the award and my tears fell down with all the emotions I was feeling, it made me laugh to see that when I stopped fighting against myself and began to enjoy and get to know myself, to treat myself well, to use my energy in training positively and working on my limitations, I achieved what I thought it was impossible. And the second thing that happened is that I started to help people that were lost about themselves the same way I used to be. So I started giving therapies of human design, access bars, and hypnosis to help them to improve. I'm using these tools also in skating coaching sessions and using the sport as a means to break the limitation. And with other rollerbladers friends, we found Rolfem, that is an association that not only supports the sport or invite people and girls to come to skate, but also we teach them to get to know themselves and also to be themselves. We created an online platform with a subscription where you can learn to skate different modalities. Also learn self-knowledge tools to overcome fears and be yourself enjoying the journey with the skating from anywhere in the world. And also we organize in-person experience with meditation, visualization and skating classes. We have already carried out several editions in Spain and Chile. This year we will carry out four or five days experience in Venice Beach, in Chile, in Spain and in Indonesia. And our goal is to be the invitation for more people to get to start in the sport by being themselves. Because if there is one thing that I learned is that when we learn just to be ourselves, we will be the most successful version of ourselves. And not only the best skater or the most happy, 
but also we will be the biggest contribution to other people. And now I'm focusing my energy in this podcast so that people like you or like me that want to improve on a sport and want to achieve a goal can break the limitation through the experience of experts in self-knowledge tools. I hope you like this story about a very shy girl from Chile represent her country in international contest at the age of 34 on skate. My next challenge is to learn to do backflip and for this I'm using self-hypnosis tools to achieve that. Because for me the only limitations we have are the ones that we create in our minds. If you like this podcast, I invite you to subscribe and stay tuned for the next chapter. I also invite you to follow Rolf Femme and check the new experiences that we will publish soon. I also invite you to join me on this journey to see what else is possible on skates and learn new tools to become a conscious athlete.